Before I start, uh, I'd like to give a book plug. Uh, one of the books that I'd recommend uh, that every Christian should buy and read would be this one, uh, Expository, Th Expository Thoughts on the Gospels by J.C. Ryle. Uh, there's one for each gospel. They were written, um, well, 100, over 150 years ago by now, but they are as readable and as helpful as ever. They have been a blessing to countless numbers of Christians over the years and have been translated into many uh, languages. Uh, there's a Christian bookshop in the market in Neath and in Swansea. Uh, I'm sure that you'd be able to purchase them there. Um, please consider buying and, more importantly, reading them. I'll give um, details on the WhatsApp group later on. Our parable this afternoon is to be found in Mark uh, 4. 26 to 27, um, 29, sorry, 26 to 29. I had thought at one time of just reading out of Ryle's book, uh, but in the end I've decided against. But I will be relying heavily on his points and comments throughout the remainder of this address. This short parable, which is more of a comparison than a story reminds us of the parable of the sower. It's an amplification on the development of the seed that fell on the good soil. It sets before us the history of the work of grace in an individual's soul. There is, according to our Lord, a close resemblance between some familiar operations in the culture of corn and the work of the spirit in the heart. And there are four points for us to note. Firstly, as in the growth of corn, so in the work of grace, there must be a sower and seed. The earth never brings forth corn of itself. It is a mother of weeds, but not of wheat. The hand of man must plough it and scatter the seed, or else there would never be a harvest. In the same way, a person's heart will never of itself turn to God Repent, believe and obey. It is utterly barren of grace. It is utterly dead towards God and unable to give itself spiritual life. The Holy Spirit must break it up and give it a new nature. J.C. Ryle says, Grace in the heart is an exotic it is a new principle from without, sent down from heaven and implanted in his soul. Left to himself, no man living would ever seek God. Are you a Christian this afternoon? If so, why? Was it because of something intrinsic in you? No. You heard a sermon or a friend's comment or perhaps you read something and something was planted, a seed, the word of God and that brought life. Secondly, as in the growth of corn, so in the work of grace, there is much that is beyond man's comprehension and control. The wisest farmer on earth can never explain 
all that takes place in a grain of wheat when he has sown it. He knows the broad fact that unless he puts it into the ground and covers it up, there will not be an ear of corn in the time of harvest, but he cannot command the prosperity of each grain. He cannot explain why some grains come up and others die. He cannot specify the hour or the minute when life shall begin to show itself. He cannot define what that life is. These are matters he must leave alone. He sows his seed and leaves the growth to God. The workings of grace in the heart in like manner are utterly mysterious and unsearchable. We cannot explain why the word produces effects on one person in a congregation and not upon another. We cannot explain why, in some cases, with every possible advantage and in spite of every entreaty, people reject the word and continue dead in trespasses and sins. We cannot explain why, in other cases, with every possible difficulty and with no encouragement, people are born again and become decided Christians. We cannot define the manner in which the Spirit of God conveys life to a soul and the exact process by which a believer receives a new nature. All these are hidden things to us. We see certain results, but we can go no further. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou heareth the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Here is a, a timely word to those of us publicly involved in the preaching and teaching of God's Word. The highest abilities, the most powerful preaching, the most diligent working cannot command success. God alone can give life. But it is a truth at the same time which supplies an admirable antidote to over-carefulness and despondency. Our principal work is to sow the seed. That done, we may wait with faith and patience for the result. We may sleep and rise night and day and leave our work with the Lord. He alone, and he, if he thinks fit, will give success. Mm. Thirdly, as in the growth of corn, life will manifest itself. <laughs> Perhaps the beginnings will be hidden and mysterious, but if there be life, the plant will grow and it will be evident to all. Jesus says, all by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As there are stages in the development of corn, so in the child of God, there should be development, maturement, advancement, progress, growth. What's the only evidence that someone is a child of God? What's the only evidence that someone has grace in their hearts. It's this, growth. You see, we cannot see the new birth as we cannot see the seed in the ground. We can only see growth. Friend, are you growing as a Christian? 
have you developed over the past year? Five years? Ten years? Do you know more? Are you more patient? More kind? More forgiving? More holy? Perhaps it would be better if I asked the question, do you want to grow? Or even better, are you endeavouring to grow? You see, one of the mistakes people are guilty of in these days is believing that growth is automatic. It is out of our control or it comes through some kind of osmosis, just being in a religious environment. Growth is not automatic. Time cannot help you. One of the most tragic things you can find in the church is a Christian who has stopped growing. They are Christians, but as far as their knowledge, faith, grace, experience, discernment is concerned, they are in the same position as they were 30 years ago. They haven't grown. How tragic. Imagine seeing a mother with her new baby. You are full of joy and fuss. Is he feeding well? Is he sleeping well? You hold the baby. Lovely. Imagine that you see the same mother in a couple of years with the same child, but he hasn't grown. He's still a baby, still feeding on milk only, still can't walk, still can't talk. That would be sad, wouldn't it? Then in another couple of years, the same mother with the same child, but still a baby, you would cry for that mother. No development, no growth. Christians should grow. Fourthly, as in the growth of corn, so in the work of grace, there is no harvest till the seed is ripe. No farmer thinks of cutting his wheat when it is green. He waits till the sun and rain and heat and cold have done their appointed work and the golden years hang down. Then, and not till then, he puts in the sickle and gathers the wheat into his barn. God deals with his work of grace exactly in the same way. He never removes his people from this world till their work is done. They never die at the wrong time. However mysterious their deaths appear sometimes to us. We can leave this parable with this truth on our minds and take comfort from the death of every believer. Let us rest, let us rest satisfied that there is no chance no accident, no mistake about the decease of any of God's children. They are all God's husbandry and God knows best when they are ready for the harvest. May God add his blessing to the preaching of his word in our land in these days. For his name's sake. Amen. Amen.